Howdy, and welcome back to the channel. Literally, as I started to film this, Gary's hopped on to uh, be part of the video. So this is going to be a very quick one. And the reason I'm filming this video is because I literally just got back from overseas. And I thought I'd show you guys what I carry on a trip. <laughs> This is my very old Peak Design first generation Messenger 15, which I don't think they make anymore. Because this one's literally falling apart, as you can see. But anyway, I'm going to switch to the top down camera and I'll take you through what I've got in my bag and why I have it. Because at the end of the day, for the last, say, at least five years, if not longer, I've been just doing everything with just carry on bags. So this plus a little stroller. And that's all I have with me. So that's taken me to Greenland, Iceland, uh, Antarctica was a bit bigger, but I had like three camera bodies with me. So most of the trips are now with just carry on only. So I'll show you what I've got. All right. Uh, and just as an additional note, the two things that are not in the bag because I'm using them at the moment is a little pocket tripod, which is where this phone is and the phone itself, which is the S23 Ultra at the moment. So anyway, let's go to top down view. Welcome back. So let's get rid of the keyboard and this thing on. So, like I said, this is the Peak Design bag. Let's take a look inside. And that's basically everything, minus the passport, right? First of all, I have my Muji Daily Planner, which I'll put here. This is a little small rig mini tripod if you like so you can put your phone in here it orientates vertically and horizontally and has all these little spray wing legs so that you can balance it i'm going to take everything out and then i'll show you what it does that's going to be much faster uh, usb-c cable this for just my charger my rode microphones the sony uh, zv1 Ah, these things are awesome. This is the Neura headphones. So these is the Neura True Pro from memory. So this is the best ones you can get, uh, which has that adaptive sound technology, but I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, <laughs> this is, I've actually just got the new one that's come. This is my travel adapter, but I'll show you the new one. Because then you don't need to take your Haymix with you. And the best travel drone ever. So this is the DJI Mini 3 Pro. Okay, let's, oh, is there anything else? Yes, a couple of pens. So I always carry some back pens. So this is the, uh, I think these are just the Muji pens, random one from Qantas who I flew recently. In here, there's just a Microsoft Arc mouse. So it's basically, it folds flat, then you can bend it and it becomes a normal mouse. I like it because it can just fit in here quite well. There's another pen in there. Uh, in here, I've just got random cards and SD cards and stuff like that. So I'm not going to go into that. Um, not sure if there's anything there. Uh, here, I carry my Kindle, my laptop, which is just on that side over there, right there. And this is just my little document holder that has my tickets and insurance, paperwork, etc. This is what I was talking about before. This is the Joby mini tripod. I'll put a link to all these, obviously. Um, this folds up quite nicely. It has a removable phone holder clip so that you can actually put the camera directly onto here. But really, it's just so that you have something stable to do your filming with. Now, the ZV-1 is awesome so this small little camera at the moment you actually flip out the screen it turns on so you can use it to vlog you can do it use it to actually take some decent photos as well it's got a one inch sensor so it's quite nice so when you flip it back it turns itself off i'm going to take this off if it's a little bit unwieldy now i'm going to go for one quick second and i'll grab the two things that are not in here at the moment back again I couldn't find my actual one, so I bought this in Singapore, which was just so that I had something to 
plug into my travel adapter. But this, which has just arrived in my replacement, is what I normally use. Uh, so basically, it's a little bit bigger than this travel adapter, but you know. Now, the reason this is really impressive is because I needed this so that I could plug in my Hamix 65 watts. So this power brick will do basically my laptop and drones and everything else. It's got a USB-C and a USB-A, so that went into here. And this basically has all the countries of the world. So, you know, you can go America, tilt it to Australia, or you've got UK. Sorry, that's the Europe, this is the UK, vice versa. Like, yeah, so this one has uh, like a 10 watt of the USB-C as well. So it's not bad, right? But this thing combined is actually this, because this actually has a 65 watt GAN output. So this is actually the same as having this power brick built into here. So if you add that all together, it's a little bit more compact. And the best thing is because you don't have this piggyback onto the back like so it doesn't have that weight so depending on how you're traveling it doesn't tilt down like you can imagine if this is plugged into your power socket it's gonna just tilt and sometimes it kind of loses connection and all that so it becomes far less bulky to have this one device which is what i normally travel with but i lent it and i couldn't find my original so that's why i had to go with the other one for this travel and it has two usb a's two usb c's and then the power port as well which is the uh, one that has the high output for your laptop etc so in the future i'll probably just be traveling with just this like i used to this is the microsoft surface mouse i use a surface pro it's plugged in over there uh, let me just grab it Ta -da. this is the laptop of choice it's a laptop it hides a pen and you can use it as a tablet as well and it's a touch screen etc so i can actually scribble on it i can take notes on pdfs with the pen and it's powerful enough that it does most of my content creation stuff. And I love the fact that if you get bored, you can just plonk it up with the built-in kickstand. And there you go. You can actually watch media stuff as well on there. This is the Surface Mouse. This is really old now. But yeah, basically it's in an off state. You bend it and it turns on. And then it's just like a regular mouse. And you can just fold it flat and it turns itself off. Kindle. So I've been loving the... Uh, Three Body Problems series by uh, Peter Lu. I don't know how to actually pronounce that. So this is my Kindle Paperwhite, I think it is. Um, I'm sure you guys know what a Kindle does. So now this is probably my favorite, favorite bit of tech recently, which is the DJI DJI Mini Pro 3. Now I do have a Mavic 3 just in the cupboard behind me, but this controller, like this does 90% of the filming that I need to do. It's so light, it's 249 grams, as you can see here. And it has incredible battery life and a decent sensor. It's obviously not as gonna be as good as the ones in the Mavic series, just that look at how tiny it is. It still has obstacle sensors. It still has reverse sensors. It's not as robust as the other uh, drones out there, but you know, you can fly it. It has a pretty decent screen. It's still a bit reflecty, so it's not as good as all the pro equipment, but is it 80% of the year? No, I'd say it's 90% of the way there for what most people will actually end up using it for. You can do time lapses with it. You can do waypoints and you can do the zoom, the drone selfies, etc. About the only thing it doesn't have is the multiple lenses on the camera and it isn't quite as stable when it's in high winds, but you know, for your average day-to-day -day stuff, this is incredible, considering how compact it is. All right, so pens aside, this is the other thing I was talking about. So the small rig, this is a, you can basically set it up like so for your phone. So again, if you wanna watch things, film things, it's really good. And you can adjust it this way as well, got the rubber feet on both sides. So you can actually have it on basically the angle and it's fairly small so if you want to just walk around with it it's good the other good thing about it and why i specifically got this model is that it has the cold shoe mounts so for the phones etc here we go um, they will actually slip right in so you can actually clamp things to the top and uh, you know have this plugged in so on and so forth and you can actually mount this onto the tripod as well with the with the screw mount so that's there now, Rode, would I, so I've got the Wireless Go 2, 
sorry, I'm sure you could just hear my cat food dispenser going off. So these are great because you can turn this on and yeah, it's good for if it's a noisy environment and I want some clean audio, it has built in uh, recording. There is a new one called the Wireless Me and that one has a really big advantage, which I don't think any of the others actually have, which is auto volume leveling. So it doesn't actually ever sound harsh. Like you can't make yourself talk so loud that the audio blows out and goes really bad. So uh, would I recommend this considering how much it costs? Because I got the two pack, it's fairly expensive. Uh, the Mi is probably just fine for most people. And the DJ, like if you're gonna get a pricey one, the DJI one with the little charging box, etc., is probably the one I'd recommend right now. I'm sure these guys will come up with a new one soon. That's the little carrying pouch and just has a wind muffler. And yeah, this is just for if I wanted to plug it into the, the, the this is a hot stream mount, obviously, but yeah, it would plug into that. And then the cable would go from here along to this side, which is a bit awkward. So maybe I can do it backwards. Nope. like can't no so anyway that's kind of what makes it a bit awkward is having to run the cable like so that's how it would look so then you would have wireless audio from wherever you stuck this on i think it's got a range of about 100 meters to your logging camera Ta -da. I mean, it's not a bad setup. Uh, the DJI one would do very much similar stuff. It's a bit smaller, but I'm going to leave that there. That looks not bad, actually. It looks better than I expected. Uh, so USB-C cord. So this is what I was using to plug into my Hamix, but this is would go here. This would plug in and that charges my laptop. Um, I always carry around my yearly diary. So in it, I have any sort of day-to-day -day plans that I want to get done and I make my goals. And so, and on one side, I will have my little gratitude journal. Oh, forgot about this. So I got this in the back streets of Sintra. There was this lady who was just doing these watercolor and pencil drawings. This is my little Lisbon, Portugal uh, souvenir. And she basically had this old ledger book and she was just tearing off a page and wrapping that up. And uh, yeah, I put it in here for safekeeping. This also is pretty good for just having the little sleeves to protect uh, anything you want to carry, like pieces of paper, etc. So that's that. Is there anything else? Oh, yes, this wasn't in there because I had shifted it. Uh, so I just recently got this. This is the Insta360 Flow. So basically, it's a gimbal which is magnetically attached so you can take it off attach it to your phone but i can't at the moment since i'm filming and uh i'll put in slice in some hyperlapses that i shot with it it's really really compact as you can see um, so you do have a power out so you can power your phone with it you can it is usb-c rechargeable through here the coolest thing about it uh, is that this is actually the battery so the handle has nothing except a telescoping antenna which you can tilt and it has a built-in tripod so you can actually put it down and film with it for the size of this thing that is incredibly compact i do have the rubber hand, hand grip on the number one complaint online seems to be that in order to make it so compact it doesn't have a high amount of uh like basically when you go to tilt it can't tilt up too much so it keeps on saying gimbal limit reach but all you do is you pull it up and you just tilt it slightly and you're good to go so i just feel like would i tr make that trade-off for the compact size yeah is it pocketable not unless you have huge pockets but and i would add like a little like the dji ones do like a little clip so that it stays in one spot instead of spinning around freely but you know for a Gen 1 product, this is pretty darn good. I absolutely love this thing. This was the first trip I used it on. Uh, yeah, so basically they switched the battery to here and left all this just for the control section. There is a cold shoe mount here as well. So if you wanted to, you can attach mics, etc. And that's literally it. So this trip, what I found was I hardly ever ended up using 
the camera because the zoom range of the camera on the S23 Ultra has been so good that I just didn't need to pull that out. And I also wanted to have more of a holiday holiday rather than a just sit down and take photos all the time kind of holiday and get up really early for sunrise shoots. Uh, that said, it was always nice to have a backup so that if this was doing something and I still wanted a different focal length for a different shot, I had two cameras, so I almost always will travel with two. The biggest game changer has been this drone, because that has actually made everything carry on only possible. So I am very glad that DJI has made something so small that's so compact and that's so powerful. And that's about it. So apart from that, uh, it's just, you can see the reflection. Ta-da! So there's the S23 Ultra on my little hokey homemade setup for a top-down video. And that's what I've been using to film and take the photos such as this. Apart from that, every other thing that's in my main carry, clothes and runners and extra clothing gear, nothing to do with photography or charging. There is a, the you know, one thing that is there is a, there's a micro USB cable in the other luggage. I'm not sure why I put it there to charge up this. Now, the one thing I forgot to talk about is the newer phones. So if you've seen the overhead ones, they are amazing. They basically create a really good seal on the ear and uh, the over the head ones have a rumble function. So it sounds like the bass is right there. Uh, these ones obviously can't do that because this is like, it's in your pocket. The other ones are huge, but it's like the full over the head earphones and they can't fold. So it's actually a pretty bulky package. For what this is, it does like 80% of that. It has really high quality audio, it's USB-C, it's fairly heavy and the earbuds are pretty big, but the sound quality is amazing. The noise cancelling is amazing. It picks up voice pretty well for calls, which is one of the other criteria because I tend to answer phone calls when I'm traveling. And the other thing it does is that if you have audio playing and you have the active noise cancelling on, you can barely heal, hear nothing on a plane. So I literally one or two rows down from me, there was a kid crying. I put these in, played some music. Actually, I was listening to a podcast and voila, that was it. I could not hear it until it was time to land and I turned them off and yeah, then I could definitely hear them. Last thing, I was actually using it last night, hence it wasn't in the bag and I'd forgotten about it. These eye masks whatever are awesome so they kind of cup the eyes so you get absolute perfect black levels to sleep with and these are fairly pricey but they're just so comfy so highly recommend these are my favorite ones i've tried gone through about four different ones and this is what i've settled on and this is a velcro pad so you can actually take it off and move it around so that it fits your eyes perfectly so that's the last thing in my travel kit hopefully this video was worth it Again, like and subscribe for more stuff like this. I'm going to just make random videos, I think. Mainly going to be tech, travel, and tips and tricks and whatnot. So let me know if this is the sort of stuff you like. Uh, follow along for more. Bye.